We have one pop. We have one planet. We have a few systems. We're generating 1100 energy and 2200 minerals. Over the years, we've done some very interesting one something challenge. The one planet challenge, the one system challenge. But what if I told you that there is a way to win the game with only one pop. One pop only. That's all you need in order to win the game. And, and I don't just mean just win the game. I mean steamrolling the game. That's right. Let's dive in into the wonderful world of the one pop challenge. It is an interesting one, to say the least. First of all, we are very straightforward, and uh, our empire is also relatively simple. We are autocratic, we are militarist, and we are spiritual. That's relatively straightforward. We also have a diplomatic corps, because we are only going to have one pop, so why would we get anything to boost our pops? We just need the one, but most importantly, we have death cults. Yes, death cults is the key to make this work. And we'll get to that a little bit more shortly, but to get you on the track about death cults, essentially they take pops of an empire, sacrifice them to get a bonus to their empire in general. And that is usually depicted by the following. It's a uh, particular edict that you can use. It's the sacrifice to get and harmony, and most importantly, bounty. Essentially what it does is it increases the unity output of death priests and it increases your monthly minerals by 5%, energy by 5%, and pop growth speed by 5%. Or at least that's what the game wants you to believe. Let's get rolling here and all will be explained soon. Now first of all, this is my empire. Where did everybody go? And most importantly, we are going to do the standard stuff. We're going to go and start uh, colonizing and surveying all around the shop and see if we can find any interesting places for us to set our feet down because we're going to need a bunch of planets right off the get-go and make things reasonably prosperous. Where did everybody go is probably the question that this empire is about to ask themselves. But, A-Spec, you say, this empire? This is your empire. Yes. However, we've just started a new planet in a new sector. We're going to turn this planet into a sector by itself. Yeah, it's, it's just going to have its own thing. It's got its own thing going on. And it is critical for what we are about to do. So as you can see, we only have one pop on this planet, this magnificent uh, specimen of our species, the one above all. And this is going to be the only pop we will have for the rest of the game, because this is where the fun begins. We're going to declare population controls. We are going to deploy new luxuries, all of that good stuff. Then, remember that first sector, or at least that area that we had over here? Well. But first, we're going to need to move our capital for 250 influence. Yeah. Now, this particular sector, Irem Prime, is our capital area. Next, we are going to release our original sector, the one with the four planets, and turn it into the Blood Sacrifice. Yes, we are going to turn this into a Blood Sacrifice. And we are most importantly going to turn it into a Scholarium. Because the Scholarium will give us science, and science is something we currently don't have of. Remember, we only have a singular pop, which is somewhat problematic. It's going to be involved in none of our own conflicts. We will get involved in all of their conflicts. But most importantly, we will need four holdings at any time. Also unify census for the hell of it. But we need to have four holdings. This is incredibly important for this. And then we're just going to go ahead and proceed. A new empire has been born. There they are, the blood sacrifice. And where is everybody is us with our singular pop just hanging out all by themselves. We're just going to go ahead and actually build up this uh, this here mining station while we are at it because that's also very important. But I spec you say you only have one pop. How on earth are you going to win the game at this point? Good question, uh, person on the internet. We're going to go to every single one of these planets and we are going to build a very special little structure. We are going to build the sacrificial shrine now the sacrificial shrine does a couple of very interesting things it will create a very special little job called a mortal initiate and the more mortal initiates we have 
the better. Because mortal initiates, we can sacrifice. And they are not in our empire, so we don't have to sacrifice any of our singular pops. Because if we did, we would automatically lose the game. If you don't have any pops, you lose. And this is, of course, a problem, because we don't want to lose. We want to win with overwhelming power. Yeah, well, that's right. So all of these holdings are now going to grow very, very rapidly. We are also going to improve relationships with one of our many envoys that we have available. And right now, these guys won't like us very much because they are going to be disloyal because we are so incredibly weak compared to them, especially in the economy department. I may have done it a little bit of a good, uh, too much of a good job in order to, you know, build up my economy. We're also going to need to build a sacrificial temple here. And if we can get an embassy complex, which we cannot get at the moment because we don't actually have a planet. We just have a, a shack on the surface of a planet. And yeah. Now we wait. We wait until the holdings are done. So, the holdings are done. These planets will now have the special pops called Mortal Initiates. Mortal Initiates, as I mentioned at the start of the game, it can be sacrificed through these special edicts. Now, the real fun here is, is that the bonus for Sacrifice Bounty, or any of the bounties for that matter, is based on a very interesting calculation. Basically, it takes a multiplier and essentially says energy and minerals times 5 times 30 times multiplier percentage. So, what does that mean? It means that if we have a relatively small empire, like in this particular case, where we have an empire size of 24, and we add the random multiplier on top of that, which in this case is going to be 10, it basically means that we get a multiplier of point something. Now, point something times a larger number usually means a big number, which means... Well, allow me to show you. <laughs> um, let's do the sacrifice bounty, shall we? Where is everyone? Yes, a sacrifice has been made. Oh boy, we now have a monthly mineral count of plus 2,304. And uh, let's keep an eye on the top of the screen here. And what is that going to look like at the end of the month, sir? Oh yes, we have a Dyson Sphere array of resources available. <laughs> Ah, this is so broken, and I love it. Okay. So, to put things <laughs> into perspective, we have one pop. We have one planet. We have a few systems. We're generating 1,100 energy and 2,200 minerals. Yeah, this can get a little bit silly, as you may th as you may expect, because we're also getting science from this place, because we made sure that all of these planets generate ridiculous amounts of science, and the scholarium that they are are going to give us more and more. But the fun doesn't stop here. We've expanded a little bit. We've subjugated some empires who were rather glad to join, actually. The Cepheus update is rather broken in this sense. By the way, you have till first day to do this. FYI, so get your Iron Mans ready. And uh, yeah, the edict has come to an end. Oh, sacrifice bounty, why have you come to an end? This is so sad. Yeah, don't worry though, we're only running at minus 1700 minerals right now. And we have built a couple of additional um, holdings. Yeah, sacrificial shrines pretty much everywhere. What can we do with this? All sorts of fun stuff, let me tell you. Let's, uh, I don't know, try the bounty one more time. Ah, yes. Dozens of pops are now being sacrificed for our glory, but what does this translate to? Well, as soon as the month ticks over, you will see what that translates to. <laughs> I cannot believe it. it we're making 8,000 minerals a month, and we're making 5,000 energy a month right now. I, I cannot even begin to describe how absolutely silly this is, because let's be honest here. Having only one pop on our planet, who is happily being a death priest, coordinating all this stuff, no doubt, is kind of ridiculous. And what this also translates to is that now we can essentially double, well, let's not go to a thousand, but we can double our 
uh, alloy buy quite easily. Do we need resources? Just buy them on the market, no problem. What else can we do with this? Well, we can also go ahead and uh, build up a bunch of our fleets. And as soon as we have an enclave available, we can just plop it down and there is our fleet. We can just buy or hire a fleet whenever we want because, well, we can build a fleet, sure, but why would we if we can hire people? Now, you may be wondering, A-Spec, where are all these resources coming from? This system is generating 988 minerals. This planet, by itself, or at least this asteroid, is generating 269 nice minerals. Now this one is generating 539 minerals. And this one a nice and cozy 179. Yeah, this... Oh my god, this one's generating... This system is generating 1,200 minerals with two planets of 539 each. My lord, this is absolute insanity. Now, where do you go from here? Well, you're not going to be colonizing any planets. You're just going to be building up fleets or use all of those envoys you have built up slowly over time and just spam them into the galactic community because with this economy, you are so much stronger than anybody else. Everybody is super weak. Nobody can do anything against you in this particular scenario. You are the one pop. You are the singular power within the galaxy. And from this moment onwards, it is steamrolling time. I hope you enjoyed this. This exploit's not gonna be up for much longer. It will most likely get opted out on Thursday when the uh, patch for Cepheus lands, the last one before the holidays. So be aware of that. In the meantime, make sure you get your stuff in because Oh boy, the difficults are kind of ridiculous. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to the Chinese community who found this wonderful exploit. There is apparently over 200,000 of you out there and you are, you're a bunch of absolute madmen uh, and women, of course, because this is hilariously insane. I love it. In the meantime, though, have you ever thought about Pops being used as food yeah you can do so in this video over here you can go and check all that stuff out so feel free to move over to the wonders of xeno livestock that can be turned into ice cream looking forward to see you in that video because the hilarity will continue over there until next time take good care of yourselves and as always eat shutter <laughs>